Hey guys, thanks for watching. This video is all about getting better on your own. So without a coach, without a friend helping you, because a lot of the videos that I see about getting better, people talk about, well, have a buddy come out and do this, or uh, have someone film you doing that, or have somebody hold, hold something like this. 99.9% .9 of time that you spend getting better at golf is done totally alone. The time that you go out to work on something to get better at golf, me anyway. And even somebody who's super social, like Lee Trevino said one time, that golf is a very solitary thing. There's four steps to it. We're gonna go through each one of those four steps in this video and I'm gonna kind of put a personal twist on it because there's something that I'm trying to get better on and this is the way that I'm doing it. and I think, uh, I think it will help you guys out a lot. The first step in this process is you need a good diagnosis of what you're gonna do and what you're gonna work on. This is the point where you have to really decide, hey, what is that one thing in my swing that I just can no longer deal with? I can no longer accept having this flaw in my swing, whatever it is. This is the part that really separates good pros from great pros and uh, bad pros from okay pros. Because in everybody's swing, my swing, even I'm sure like Tiger Woods when he looks at his own swing, you're gonna see between two and maybe a hundred different things about your swing that you don't like. What really makes a, a great teacher is the one that can separate and say, hey, you know, you see this one thing in your swing, like I know there's all this other stuff that you'd like to change, but you see this one thing, that's the thing that's causing all these other problems to happen. And it's not only somebody who can say that, but it has to be true as well, right? It, like, because somebody could say like, hey, you see your, uh, you see your, your chicken wing here? You know, let's just get rid of that and then everything's going to get better. Well, wh what if you get rid of that and everything stays the same, right? That's the first part is, is a good diagnosis. So you can, there's, there's lots of different pros that are having, uh, especially now, that are having online diagnosis. You can, you can do that. There's a, there's a lot available for free as well. I'll try to put some in, in the links. But having a really good diagnosis of what your problem is and then deciding like, okay, this is the thing that I'm going to get better at. So once you know what you're going to get better at, the best thing to do is to write it down. And I'm not just saying like take a mental note or think like, hey, like I'm going to get, no, physically write it down and bring it with you. Like here I have my, my notepad here. Say, hey, this is the goal. I can no longer go for, for the next 40 years of playing golf or whatever it is with this problem. You know, it's just holding me back. And I know that if I get better at this thing, I will get better at the game. Personally, we're gonna get into what it is for me because I think that's the best way that you guys can uh, personalize it and say like, okay, he's trying to get better at this thing. I have a different problem, but it can be attacked in the same way. So for me, what my issue has been, in the backswing, I raise up, right? I come, my, my shoulders get flat and I raise up. So the, the next step in the process after you've diagnosed it, you wanna have some kind of feel to be able to rehearse away from a ball, like something that you can just do at home. This is the very first step in the process. For me, what I've been doing is, you can take two alignment sticks and, and put them together. Here I have a shaft and an alignment stick. So for me, I'm taking these two things here. And all I'm doing is I'm going there, pointing to the ball, pointing to the ball. Really, I'm pointing about a foot past the ball pointing about a foot past the ball. And I'm keeping this pointed at my target here. And you can see at the target line. So if this is a continuation of the target line, I just point, repoint. And there I can see it did a little wrong. Point, repoint. Normally, my normal swing would, would be this to this. In any of these things that I'm gonna show you today, and this is backed up by a lot of research, you don't want to just practice the perfect thing all the time. You actually want to practice like, okay, that would be an exaggeration of an overfix, and that is way wrong. You want to practice a lot of times the wrong thing, and then practice the right thing to really kind of feel the edges around your issue. You have to go out and build an obstacle course. Now this is, for almost any problem in golf, you can construct some kind of obstacle course to, to help it. 
So I get a lot of this stuff from Mike Bender, who has a really great book that is all about building a swing for a lifetime. So in that book, he has a ton of different drills that you can do, and almost all of them involve some kind of noodle station. Because he was saying to me when I interviewed him, he really started improving when he started using obstructions and things getting in his way. Because we all hear so much about feeling real. This might feel really steep in my shoulders to me. You know, you, know, you don't know. But we want to start being able to match feel and real. So the thing that I'm, I've been doing is I've been putting this shaft, like if I was on a grass range, I would just stick this in the ground like that, you know. But I'm not, so I have this little shaft holder thing here. This goes just off my shoulder here. And then the first thing you do, you're just making swings without any, without a ball or anything like that. You're just feeling it. And I have the, the, also the advantage to see the sun is perfectly here so I can see my head level here. So then you wanna go from swings in this station to also remember practicing the wrong thing either side and be like, no, 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 that's what I want there. And then to hitting some, some shots inside your obstacle course. I'm gonna feel what I'm working on, two pieces. That was great. So I'm in my obstacle course station here with the noodle. Yeah, really good. Then you got to be able to see if you can do what you're feeling ballistically. Meaning, out on the golf course, there's not going to be a noodle station for you. There's not going to be any of this other stuff. You got to be able to see if you're doing it ballistically. So I got the live view set up here. And what I really like this for, initially went that because i've had it for a couple years now and i use it quite often but initially what i like it for is this digital swing mirror so i can look at myself so for me i got a line drawn right here and uh, i could draw it a little a little lower but it's really just a reference to okay how far am i getting from that as i'm making my back swing and i'm trying to match the reel with the feel of it because when i'm in the noodle station or i'm working here in the uh in the cell phone, both times what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to match the good thing that I'm doing, the good reel that I'm doing with a, a new feel. Because the, the feels are going to be the thing that take it to the golf course. So Live View has always been good as a digital swing mirror to see what you're doing and match feel and reel. But what it has now, as I click this, what it has now is it has the ability to, it has a little microphone on there, and as you, when you hit the ball, the microphone's gonna hear that, and it's gonna replay it instantly. It's not, this is a feature that's new, that this has not always had. And this is a really powerful way to get better. You can hit a shot, and immediately, when that swing is still in your body, you can look back and see how you did. So I'm looking at this one, and I can see my levels were really good. My transition was not exactly what I want. And you can start to affect change. Like you can start changing your swing really fast. That's one of the, one of the best things about having a coach is they can stand back there and tell you like, hey, you're doing X, Y, and Z. But for you to be able to, to start matching those feels together with what's actually happening. So there I saw my level was good. My level was okay, good here. And then I kind of came up a little early. All right, so that was a lot better. And I can watch it in the replay. Yeah, it was good levels, but I saw it wasn't as forward as I want. Now, th this is the part that's gonna take a lot of discipline because you have to stick on what you're working on. There's like, my takeaway is to under and roll, and, and the face is actually kind of shut and under as the hands go out. So that's, that's a problem, but it's not, it's not what I'm working on right now. That would be, that would be another project. Mm. That was a great shot. So I'm gonna watch this one. Yeah, that was good, just super balanced through the whole shot. So the four steps of getting better by yourself without a coach or anything like that is first to diagnose and write down what you're gonna work on and be specific about it. And also realize that changes a lot of times come in twos, even numbers. 
I'm working on staying down, then I also have to work on not punching as much because when I used to raise up, I'd have to punch to get back to the ball. So for me, it has to work here and there, more of a, a sweep or more of a body kind of like push-pull thing. The second part of it is you have to then get a feel with it. So what you can do is uh, so some, find some kind of feel that you can work on at home or before you hit balls or in between hitting shots. So for me, it's like this, going like that and that, that and that. And I get the extra benefit of the sun here is, is putting my shadow on this mat perfectly. The third part is you have to make some kind of obstacle station, whatever your fault is. You have to find some kind of obstacle station to be able to work on it where, and you gotta put it, you know, you gotta make your tolerances pretty tight. I don't really like over exaggeration that much, but you do have to make your tolerances pretty tight to be able to start to feel it. So I'm actually gonna want this a little closer. So I'm gonna make it tough, you know, and I'm gonna feel the wrong thing a couple times. Feel the right thing. For me, this would be a really good obstacle course to go through. Yeah, great shot. And then you gotta be able to do it ballistically. The way that I'm doing that is using the live view golf in the replay mode, and which is, a, is like a really powerful learning tool. That having that immediate feedback, like even in the time it would take you say, like I could film my own swing like there, like hit the button, come over. And by the time you hit the shot, walk back, and then open the, the photo album and everything and then review it, the feel is gone by then. The feel, the, your feel leaves you in about like 20 seconds maybe, max. So you gotta have it still in your body. So here, I know what I'm working on ballistically, I'm going, you want to start feeling like as if I, I like to feel as if there's like ghost noodles I call them so like there's a noodle here even though there's not so uh, for that I go mm. that's a good shot and then and then the way that I like to do this in, in a perfect world you have a station for each one of these things and you've, you've physically distanced these stations apart. That takes up a, a ton of space, but that is the best way to do it. Your brain, kind of the way your brain works and a lot of this research I've been seeing is um, having uh, this distance between the different tasks you're doing. Like what would be ideal would be like if, if you had to walk like say like 20 or 30 yards between stations. And then, because what, what this one teacher was telling me, the real way to start getting something is to, to have it and then lose it and then try to find it back again yourself. And, uh, and in that recreation, that's a, a huge part of the learning. Really good. And step four is, challenging yourself to be able to do it ballistically using this replay so that you can start matching and I can review what I just did there yeah it looked all right a huge part of this is that you got to start asking yourself a lot of questions but like okay what did that feel like to me that felt here and re really a lot more forward than my normal swing. So then you might match that feel and reel together. Oh, that's a great shot. Just check that one out. I'm looking at my head relative to the, to the trees in the background and that was good, but I did raise up just a little bit. So I'm gonna go here and there. So I'm gonna get lower and less punch, more slap. That's better. All right, because I know no 
YouTube video about golf is complete if it doesn't have driver in it. It feels like, hey, what's missing? Here, 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 here. Oh, great shot. I think, and I'm gonna look in the review, I think I did exactly what I wanna do in a Tiger Woods 2019 kind of way. Let's see, backswing stayed pretty low. Yep, backswing was a little long, but not bad. So now I wanna bring it to the course. So I'm imagining this hole here, 325 yards, super straight hole. There's a little low area at like 290 or something like that. So that's where I would wanna get into here and I'm feeling my ghost noodles area here <clears throat> yeah we really good right down the middle I feel like I did what I was trying to do yeah replay look good all right that's it guys it's just it's just four steps diagnose it get a feel for it get an obstacle course and then do it ballistically and, and watch it back if you guys are interested in getting a live view pro there's a lot of there's other things on the market using other kinds of technologies. This is my favorite thing because it is the most complete. Like it, the, the actual, what's really important is the software that comes with it. And the software is, the usability of it and the functionality of having that replay mode. If it doesn't have the replay mode, you're missing out on a lot. So ever since it's got the replay mode, it's really one of my favorite things. If you use the promo code that's written here, you can get a really good discount on getting it if you're interested. Thanks for watching, guys. Click the subscribe button. See you later. Bye.